and hello good people of the internet it is I Tommy Kelly and this is Adventures in Woo and in this episode I want to talk a bit about the whole kind of notion of coming out of the broom closet as it was uh, or as it is uh, in the kind of Alan Moore announcing that you are a wizard to the world well we might not all do it as grand as that and um, there is that kind of fear I suppose that people have about and you know saying to the people around them that they're into this type of thing particularly if you're in some sort of hostile environment conservative environment or some kind of uh, environment that is not conducive to uh, these type of thoughts. Now before I get into that I have to first address the elephant in the room which is my hair. <laughs> I still haven't got around to getting a cut yet and um, I'm hoping for it to be today or tomorrow. It's amazing how your priorities change when it's the end of the world and the apocalypse is upon us. Um, in fairness my hair has been worse than other videos so I don't really know why I'm so um, self-conscious about it now I know it's okay it's fine it's uh it's been worse anyway with regard to kind of announcing to the world that you're into uh, magic or whatever it is maybe you're a secret satanist or you're a snake handler or whatever kind of divergent ideas you have or you know like I suppose like even conspiracies or any of these things and um, compared to people around you and how to kind of in a sense deal with that and I don't know the exact answer I don't know what's the best way to do it all I can tell you is what I did so when I I've always been into this stuff since I was about 12 13 and um, I kind of got into new age people like Stuart Wilde was a bit of Louise Hay then I got very quickly into Theosophy and Alice Bailey and some Buddhism and it kind of progresses from there um, and I've never really had people around me that were interested. Now my family were kind of, you know, there was definitely New Age books knocking around and my auntie was very much into it. She was the one who got me into Stuart Wilde and Theosophy, but she lived in, uh, in England and I only seen her maybe once a year or once every two years or something like that. Um, so there wasn't anyone, you know, family-wise that was as much into it as I was. My, my family were into kind of spiritual ideas, but in, in a more kind of relaxed kind of manner rather than my intense needing to know everything and discuss everything. But none of my friends were in it, in, in, into it. Apart from one guy in secondary school who uh, also played guitar and we kind of shared an uh, interest in guitar and bands and I, end, I ended up replacing him in a band then a couple of years later. But he was into Alistair Crowley and he got that kind of from the Jimmy Page element of things. But he, he, he like it was very hard to get Crowley books in those days, like next to impossible. So like someone had managed to get a hold of um, magic at some point and you know it's been passed around whatever so people had it for like a night so there was no really kind of intense study of it or whatever but there was just kind of a I don't know a coolness to it if you've managed to get your hand on oh yeah I read that you know everything but there's no real kind of discussion about it and people were more into it was a fashion thing more than really you know a magic thing and then kind of as years went on most of the people who I interacted with her, who I met actually had the polar opposite kind of ideas around uh, or outlook than me. They were very much would fall into the reductionist, materialist, atheist type cat category even if they wouldn't label themselves like that. Either it was completely dismissive of the whole thing or had a very kind of coming from a, a Catholic background mainly here in Ireland and had a very kind of um, anger towards anyone who was in had any kind of spiritual belief or any kind of uh, you know religious kind of outlook in life and it was kind of very much the kind of main kind of uh, attitude of people towards religious thought or spiritual thought or magic thought was disdain but also a kind of a, an idea of that you're obviously uh, of lesser intelligence this kind of insistence that not believing in spiritual matters made you a more intelligent person or actually conversely believing in them made you a stupid person so kind of talking about these things uh, uh, had the stigma of being an idiot so I didn't because you know who wants to be seen as an idiot when I went to college in my kind of mid mid 20s I went and did holistic health studies and there was like I think 24 of us in the class something there was me and another guy and the rest were women and even in that there wasn't an awful lot of spiritual thought there was one Wiccan and there was an, another girl who kind of had uh, good notions around certain things but the rest all kind of came from a beauty background or a kind of a I don't, I don't know like just a general kind of thing but even within that kind of circle there was a kind of um, it just uh, you know or not a disdain it wasn't quite that much but it was like a, a poo-pooing of spiritual ideas like the Reiki class was kind of not taken as seriously 
as uh, the aromatherapy class, for instance, in that, you know, the, seemed, the aromatherapy seemed a bit more science-based than this Reiki woo-woo, which, depending on what way you want to kind of get into uh, uh, aromatherapy, it has its own woo-woo-ness to it too, of course. Um, then in bands and all that, I, I came definitely across people who were very, very angry and uh, would immediately shut down uh, any kind of conversation around these things. So basically what I'm saying is, there was no one I had met up until very recently who was into any of this, and so I just didn't talk about it. And it felt like it was something, like in a sense, a little dirty secret that I had, that I hid from the world, that I wasn't allowed to talk about, and um, that would deem me less intelligent or less smart or less worthwhile or less, um, I don't know, less helpful or less part of the community if I talked about it. To be the smart, to be, you know, part, to conform, to do the thing was to be a reductionist, angry, militant atheist. Every other kind of opinion uh, wasn't allowed in any circle I'd been around, practically. Uh, with, you know, the people here and there, like it's, it wasn't a complete, uh, you know, kind of a sea of it, but for the most part, like we're talking 95% of people I'd met. So when it came to a kind of a, a thing a couple of years ago where I decided that I was going to start doing blogs about it and I was going to do all these things, it was definitely a magical revealing act that I did. And I kind of chickened out in one sense at the beginning uh, because I did it under a different name which was Fratter Blue, <sighs> a terrible name but that's what it was. But uh, like within about a week Facebook had said no you can't use this name so I had to use my real name because I had deleted all my previous social media up to then. Up to then. And then I did Adventures in Woo Woo and I just said, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to just, you know, come out, say who I am, start making videos because it scares me. It scares me on two levels. It scares me because I'm going to be talking about these things openly. And two, because I've a really kind of um, a bad physical sense of myself that I don't like looking at myself. I feel uncomfortable. Um, all those things I've talked about in different videos and in blog posts, particularly weight loss for the soul, all that kind of stuff. It's irrelevant, I suppose, now. But it was a big magical work of revealing myself, both physically, spiritually, intellectually, and all of these other things, emotionally, all of these things. And what I noticed is, for the most part, mo most people don't care. And that was echoed very quickly by uh, Gordon White Runesip, who said that when he was asked in an AMA on CMG, and he was saying, like, well, what do the people who, you know, you work with think about this? And at the time, he was working in, like, advertising in London. And he goes, no one cares. Just no one cares. And we have this kind of sense that no one does care or don't, that people do care about these thoughts. And what I have found is that people in general, the general kind of thing, don't care. You know, they'll, they'll kind of um, either ignore you or just, or, you know, just, just kind of, yeah, whatever, you know, be, be, be into whatever you want. The people who will come out of the woodwork to start arguing with you, what the best thing I've decided to do and what I think is I just don't argue with them. Um, I don't debate them. I don't, I don't feel the need to have to do that. It's like... They want to do that fine. I'll discuss things with them. Absolutely, I'll talk about different topics and that kind of thing. But I'm not debating them. And coming from the, th the whole kind of attitude that I'm not fully sold on magic as an actual real thing, as it being a reality. That uh, as a chaos magician, it's I act as if it's true and then see what happens. And for the most part, that has worked well for me. So I don't have to want to, need to, or even think it's right to insist that anyone else believes magic is real either. Or, you know, because it mightn't be. It might just be a good working hypothesis that works for me most of the time. Sometimes it doesn't, and it extremely doesn't. A lot of time it does, and it does to extremes too. So I don't feel the need to have to change anyone's mind about anything. I don't ha feel the need to have to um, make myself right and or make that, that other person wrong. I don't have to there doesn't have to be, if I meet a reductionist materialist atheist, I don't need for him or her to change their mind in order to validate my beliefs about it. And I don't want to kind of uh, go around like a Christian ministry trying to convert everyone to magic. I don't care about any of that stuff. I have no need for it. I don't want to. I think everyone should do what is right for them. But as a chaos magician, it's you leave it's your belief is a tool it's a subjective experience if reductionist materialism is working for you then you have at it and i who am i to you know disagree and some days i'm a reductionist materialist anyway so i mean I'm, I, I would literally be debating myself from a different day but i can understand it can be a lot harder when it's like people who are very close to like your parents there or your family and that you have to interact and say they come from a, from a very conservative christian 
background and you know to think what you're if you're into magic then you're into like proper satanism not proper satanism, like um hollywood satanism you know that kind of thing rather than actual satanism um and i've never had that so i can't give you an awful lot of advice other than don't go out of your way to signpost it and i know the kind of response to that is well why can't i just be who who i am and I go, well you have to decide which is more important to you signposting it and talking about it and being adversarial to the people around you and having conflict or not doing that and but not fully expressing yourself and you have to decide which bit is more important until you can maneuver your life in such a way that you can you know get away from those kind of things if you want you know and be yourself be yourself somewhere else you don't have to do it within every kind of unit you like you don't have to you know kind of be a wizard at work if that's not kind of helpful to you you know be a wizard at home and you know if you have a kind of i feel if you have a need to kind of present yourself as a wizard for some kind of i don't know you know for some sort of acolytes or, some, or not acolytes that's not the word for some sort of um to be seen in a certain light then i you know um have a think about that. What, what, what are you actually looking for? What is that? Are you looking for conflict? Are you looking for people to kind of come at you? Are you looking for debate? Whatever it is. And, you know, do you need that? Do you want that? Is it conducive to good health? Is it, you know, is it long term going to um, help you at work? Or whatever is the situation. Is it going to help you in your family unit or whatever? So I'm much happier talking about it open. And I, the key to that is, again, not feeling a need to have to change anyone else's mind about it or... Uh, which is also I don't feel um, that I have to take up other people's ideas on unless they're helpful to me. I can certainly, you know, talk to other people and, you know, I, I will. I do have friends who are magicians, you know, most of my friends, I say, are, aren't into this kind of stuff. So it's, it's tough, you know, depending on your situation, it's going to be harder for other people than, uh, you know, it's going to be harder for some people than it is for other people. And it's just you have to kind of find some sort of balance around it, whether, you know, to, if that means do it in secret, you know, to will, to dare, to be silent, all of this kind of stuff, um, then so be it. And it, um, it comes at the risk of, or at the kind of lack of being able to fully express yourself as who you want. But I mean, life is full of compromises. And if you can maneuver your life to kind of get around these type of things, then ultimately you might be better off. Long and short of it is, I can only tell you what I did. And uh, I found that by announcing it to the world that most people didn't care and the people who I thought would be more hostile than they were, weren't. Um, that's the best thing I can do is, is try it. I know I didn't, I didn't really have anything to lose other than a sense of um, my own kind of pride in a way or my kind of how I felt other people might view me, which is ego. Um, but I was at, at the stage that I didn't really care anymore. I just, just to totally didn't care what other people thought about me anymore. Um, and so I didn't really have an awful lot to, 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 to lose, I suppose, in that sense. Um, so you have to gauge how much you feel you're, you're going to lose out of it. And uh, is it worth it? You don't have to tell people you're a wizard. So... I don't know. I mean, I, that's, I don't know how helpful that is other than it's just my story and that's um, what I did. And it's sometimes I've, I've struggled with it still, depending. And I don't bring it up. If I know people aren't into it, I don't go around talking about it. I'll talk about, you know, I can kind of chameleon myself to, you know, get into whatever situation I'm in and talk to people on the level that the interaction or the relationship actually is rather than trying to force magic into every conversation or any, you know, every interaction and stuff like that. That's all, that's the best I can do. I could continue and ramble a bit more and be, you know, become steadily more incoherent as we go on, but I'll leave it there. So, good people of the internet, if you have some suggestions on things you would like me to talk about, please, by all means, tell me, because doing a video every day is uh, sometimes hard to come up with uh, an interesting thing to talk about. So, any kind of feedback in that would be most helpful. Until tomorrow, be safe, be kind, and uh, be well.